Hello and welcome. Today we're going to try something different. We're going to play with some fabric and some watercolor paints. We are going to create our own background fabric and another fabric to coordinate with it to make our own quilt. It's going to be like a watercolor painting, but we are going to make it on fabric. Just create with fabric and floss. So all you're going to need is the fabric in your size. I have a small piece of fabric for our contrasting colors. And then our background fabric, I have cut at 24 and a half by 30 and a half and that's going to be the final five of our project <laughs> so i tested around with this by using pencils and watercolor paints and here are some that i've found hopefully you can see this is very light and it's down with the pencils and I'm not pleased on the blending. And this was just dry and then adding the water to blend it. So I wasn't too fond of that technique. The other one was using the watercolor pencil, wetting my fabric and then coloring on top of it, which was a little better, but it still wasn't quite as bright as I wanted. So then I pulled out my watercolor paints and this one is a dry fabric and I just painted on, which isn't bad. Looks really good. It just takes a little longer for the paint to bleed into each other to give that watercolor effect. So I then went and wet my fabric and then started painting on there and it blended a lot easier and a lot faster so that's the technique i liked the nice thing kind of like a um boutique you can see it on both sides so you can choose which one you like better when we're getting ready to put this all together and that is also how i did the pink color so that's what we're going to use today. So you're going to need some watercolor paint. I have this set here um, that my daughter picked up off of, I want to say Amazon for me. Um, and then this paint set that we're going to use today, this is just a cheap paint set that came in one of those multi-craft kits for kids. Um, I may have even picked it up at the dollar store. That's what we're going to use. I like how it comes in. You're going to also need some paint brushes. You're going to need ones that are for watercolor or ones that you only use for watercolor. I am using, um, watercolor brushes because I paint. You're also going to need some paint fabric or fabric painting medium. The little bit goes a long way. I think I got mine from Hobby Lobby. But you're going to need a little bit of this to help set the paint into your fabric. And it also makes it so it's not so stiff. And then you're going to want to protect your table or surface that you're on. So I just have a tablecloth, a vinyl tablecloth, so then I can wet... Uh, um, wipe up the water and paint as I go if I don't want it going through. So let's get started on how to make this really awesome one of a kind. Because no matter how many times you do this, they're never going to be the same. So a one of a kind mini quilt. Let's get started. Now, yes, we're going to wet our fabric. I just have a spray bottle and I'm just wetting it. 
And I'm doing it in small sections because it will dry out. And then you can kind of fold up your other piece and kind of dab if you need. It's got excess. And then I have my watercolor palette. And I'm just going to try to spray just this side. Because that's the side I'm using. My water bottle has the um, fabric medium mixed in with the water. So the first thing you need to do is wash your fabric. You get all those chemicals out of there. And then you need to um, iron it. So now we're going to start with the light color, so our yellow. And I'm just rubbing my brush in and then just going to dab it on. And you want it to be pretty dark because, you know, it's going to dry. And so you want less water on your brush. You want more pigment when you put it in. And then you just kind of brush it. If you're doing a smaller one, you can kind of, you know, dab and watch it spread. And I'm just going to paint yellow spots all over this little section. And there's probably going to be some painter out there that will come in and, you know, say that it's not, I'm not doing it right. But I'm making a watercolor background. So it don't have to be perfect. Now, if you're talented enough, you could actually put your design right onto your fabric and paint it that way. And just paint, you know, right onto your, you know, your design right onto your fabric and make a what they consider a cheater fabric and they quilt it. And so you also want to kind of go in, so you see this section I already had done, you kind of want to go into that section as well and keep blending. Because you don't want a significant line of where you stop. Now I'm going to take some of the lighter orange. You always want to start with your lighter color. You can always add more. So if it's not coming out as dark as you want, just add some more paint on top of it. And I take my brush and I will paint this section and then I go off into its different, you know, keep going in that area and just cleaning out the brush, I guess. But you can see when I dab it down on how it spreads out. And so you just want to do this on your whole session. Now, this one is for our motif that we're going to be adding onto our background. Our background fabric, you're going to want to paint greens and blues and some yellows in there. However you want your design. You can put some purples in can add some purple. And so this is going to be leaf petals. So you can make it, you know, however you want. You know, if you want a solid color and it just kind of fades in. Okay. Add some peaks in here. So I'm just using a variety of colors and just kind of trying to keep it going just so I get a variety of colors and textures, I guess, blends in each leaf petal when we get ready to cut it out. So you have this painted and you think, oh, I may need more color. It's not dark enough. Feel free to keep adding on top of, you know, your colors. Like, I can keep adding on to this yellow to make it more, more darker. You can add some white in to tone some pieces down if you need to. 
just to add a little more tech tonal colors, I guess. If you feel like your fabric's getting dry out, just split it again. The same thing with your paint. If you feel your paint's getting a little dry, it's not blending as well. Just kind of spritz it again. And like I said, I'm using cheap, cheap paints. I didn't go out and get any fancy expensive paints. These are paints that I got when I first started practicing watercolor. Now, if you wanted to, you could do like the darker colors on the outside with the lighter colors on the inside. And so I'm just going to keep painting until I have this whole project done. And then I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let it dry overnight. And then I'll be back to tomorrow to show you how we finish up this project. Okay, so our green and blue, we want a little different than the pink we did. We're going to start with yellow. And that's going to be the majority the center part here and so i'm gonna start in the center and we're just gonna spray the center first and get it wet and then we're gonna go kind of more down toward one edge and that's gonna be our um round per se and we're just going to take our yellow and just kind of get it in. And I have different colors. I have like four different shades of yellow. And so, and then just kind of fade it, you know, off toward the edges. And I want this pretty bright. So I'm using my brightest yellows. And I will be coming back in with some other some greens and and blues to you know kind of blend more in. But we're just starting with the yellow. And don't be afraid to take your brushes strokes in different directions. They don't all have to go in the same direction. You can take some going sideways, diagonal, up and down. Just kind of add the strokes different directions. And I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, I could uh, just buy some cheap fabrics and but this way it is more customized to what you want, where you want those colors. And remember, we are going to be covering part of this up. So it's not all going to be visible. And now we're going to start adding in some greens. We're going to just spritz around the edge. Down on the one side that we came down a lot more yellow on, we want to use green there because that's going to be our bottom. We're just going to blend in some green. If you want it a little brighter, keep adding more green to it. And I'm going to take my green and come into some of the yellow. 
very light stroke. If you feel your fabric's getting a little dry, just come back and spritz it. I'm going to finish painting the green. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so we are back a couple of days later. And I'll explain why it's been a couple of days here in a minute. Okay. So we let these dry. Then I threw them in the dryer to heat set them. And then, of course, I ironed them without steam. So they're nice and flat. Then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and baste however you want to baste it. If you want to do pen basting, or I use the 505 spray basting and I attached my background to the batting and to my back backing fabric. Then I made these little templates on cardboard, which I will actually print up and have them in a link in the description so you can download, download them for free. Um, and be able to use them in your pattern. Then I used a water soluble pen and trace them. And I cut out extra just so, you know, we can see how we want to lay them out. Of course, we want to have them so we have an odd number. So you just kind of lay out the way you want your... design you got to remember we have a bottom which ha has more green and then the top which has more blue <laughs> and so we probably want to start up this way and lay out our flowers and see which way we would want them let's see maybe you'd want some where it's hanging off and you got to remember you're going to have stems that we're going to stitch on coming down but you can have your design as full as you would like of flowers You can even add smaller flowers. Maybe, maybe we'll go with something. Let's add this style flower over here. So it's coming off. Now that's a little more like this. Let's take these away. Bring it down maybe just a little. Or maybe we want another one of these instead. Have it just so it's barely hanging. Barely hanging off. And then you're going to take your circles. We have a smaller circle. And then... We have 
and the bigger ones. And of course, each one's going to be different. So you can play around with which way you want them. Scoot that one. I can scoot this one over. And we'll go with something kind of like that. Now, maybe we'll switch these two out. Go like that. Now, you can use um applique heat and bond on these i'm just going to give them a little spray to hold them down with my basting spray because we're going to go in and we're going to stitch free motion around them and what i'm going to do is take and do the flowers first and we're going to kind of bring into the point. Just free motion in around. And then I'm going to put the center on. And then I'm just going to do a spiral. And then in the end, we're going to put a button. A big button on. So what I'm going to do first is the flowers. And then I'm going to come back and draw with my pen the leaves and stems and then we're just going to free motion those on as well you can do it all in one if you want to so let's get started so we're going to move these off to the side and i'm going to put a pin in them so i know these are the circles that i want because i did cut extra so now i have extra flowers that i can be able to do something with and I'm just going to take and lightly spray my flower and kind of position it and then press it down. And it will stay there enough so I can get it applique down. If you got it in a good spot and you don't want it to move, just kind of lift up the petals and Give them a good little spritz of the adhesive. Like I said, you could use heat and bond if you would like. So let's just tack this guy down. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine. And I'm using black thread on the top and white thread on the bottom. Because I'm a painter... If you watch some of my older videos. And we, when we paint, you know, you add the details with the little black paint. So that's why I chose to go with a black red. You can go with any color thread that you want or choose to go with. If you want it to blend in or contrast, it's up to you. So let's head on over to the sewing machine. So here we are at the sewing machine. I have black thread in. I do have my feet dogs down. <laughs> yes, there's a reason why I say that. We're going to pull the bobbin thread up. So I just put your needle down and just kind of pull your top thread until it pulls up your bobbin thread. And then I always have to have another little tool, whether it be my seam ripper or a straight pin. And then you're gonna go right back down in the same hole. Let me put my glove back on. We are free motion. You can do this just with a regular sewing, or but if you want, we're going to tack it down. And then we're just going to
stitch around each petal. So as I read my machine again, I'll tell you why it was a couple days later. So my daughter's getting married in a couple months. We have roughly two months to finish all of her wedding stuff. We are making a lot of it. So it is um crazy time here. We have to finish her veil and make her signs and stuff like that. So it's a couple days. But it's well worth it. Okay, so we're going to bring back up our bobbin thread. And I'm going a couple of stitches back from where my thread broke. And it's a little harder when you have these gloves on. You can't grip some of this stuff. I mean, yeah, they're there to help you grip your fabric, but you can't grip everything else. Put it down. We're going to tack that section down. And go again. And so there are our flowers. Now I just need to go in and draw my lines for my stems. Okay, so now I'm just going to hand draw with the friction pen. my lines that I want. And because this is whimsical, when you're stitching, you can come up and back down, up and back down, just to give it a whimsical. And because I am using a friction pen, when we're done, we can iron all the pen marks off. So let's go stitch these. And I will be doing them free motion as well. And because I'm starting at the bottom, I'm just going to start off my quilt and then come up. Now that we have our flowers applique on and we've free motion, a quilting part. Now we're going to bind it. So I have some rainbow fancy blanket binding. And it is about two inches wide. And it's folded in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this to the back this time. So we're going to start at the bottom. And we're just going to attach it like I normally would with the um, edge, even with the edge of the fabric, I then cut it and squared it up. And then we're gonna fold this over like this. So it's on the front and we're gonna do a decorative stitch. So let's bind this quilt up. I always start in the bottom of my quilt. And we're going to leave the tail so we can finish it off. And then when we get to the corner, we're going to do the mitered corner, just like always. So let's bind this on the first step. Okay, so I have the binding around. What I did is I stitched it on the back side, and then I'm flipping it over. And I have it all pinned you're ready to go. And we're going to do a decorative stitch. I think I'm going to do the leaf stitch in the black as well to attach the binding down here on the top. So comment below, how do you attach your binding? Do you attach it to the back first 
or do you attach it to the front first? So let's go sew this binding together. Okay, so now we're ready to do our decorative stitch. I have my leaf pattern selected, my <clears throat> general foot, and we're ready to go. Tack it down. Now there it is finished. You can embellish it however you would like. I'm going to add some big buttons to the top or to the top of my flower. You can add some other buttons. You can do some other quilting if you want. Like if you wanted to do a bee or a bird or a butterfly, something like that, feel free to. So now that you know how to make a watercolor wilt, your arsenal is now endless. You can make any design that you want. You can create your own fabric just for what you need for that particular project. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're going to try it, and make your own fabric using watercolor paints, you be sure with a friend. And I would love to see what you create. There are many ways that you can support my channel. And one of them is maybe hit that subscribe button so you know the next time I upload a different unique technique for our quilting adventures. Coming up on screen is a video that YouTube feels that you may like, but underneath it is a playlist that will give you all kinds of different techniques for your quilting projects. Kind of like this watercolor one here. So until then, happy quilting, my friends.